I'm here in Ido de Janeiro, home of the 2016 Olympics. You wouldn't believe the size of the trees out here. I'm gonna do some exploring, hit up the mountains, and see what trouble I could find. Los Angeles to South America. I'm on a mission to explore Brazil, the largest country in South America. You're watching Uncharted with Devin Roberts. In an attempt to seek out adventure and explore a real rainforest, I venture out to Copacabana a beach town where I will have quick access to awesome beaches and of course the Corcovado Mountain, located south of the Tiahuaca Forest, which is claimed to be the world's largest urban forest, covering 20 miles, the Tiahuaca Forest. Departing out of LAX, I arrive in Rio de Janeiro, about an 11 hour flight. I just traveled over 5,600 miles. Founded in 1565 by the Portuguese, this is the main hub for all the oil that comes out of Brazil. Rio has plenty of tall buildings and amazing bridges. Art, sports, and nature coincide with the Brazilian way of living. We drive down the coast approaching Copacabana. I notice local fishermen, small knitted towns, and definitely a different type of lifestyle I am used to encountering. New experiences can make you feel more alive. Day one, I take a stroll and take notice. Brazil's an ideal visit for any explorer. Located at the Atlantic shore, Copacabana Beach stretches from Posta Dois to Posto Seis. Fort Copacabana was built in 1914 and is at the south end of Posto Seis and Fort Toque de Caias, which was built in 1779. Copacabana Beach is known to the millions who visit for the FIFA Beach Soccer World Cup, Carnival, or the 2016 Summer Olympics. I came here to enjoy a foreign place, and I am already amazed by Brazil's trees. The Copacabana Beach Promenade was built in 1970 and has a black and white tile design incorporated into it designed by Roberto Burr Marx in the 1930s. It's wavy and the construction seems to go on forever. You will notice black and white tiles in various patterns everywhere. It's hard not to notice the large groups of black vultures and frigate birds which hover around the mountains in large monuments. They were incredible to watch and intimidating. I traveled deeper into the streets and mountains and am now outside of Copacabana. In Brazil, certain neighborhoods are described as favelas. To play it safe, it is recommended to take a tour bus through the favelas. However, I chose to hit the streets to experience the neighborhoods and communities firsthand. All favelas should be considered dangerous areas. Mazes of streets, alleys, and stairwells is what you can expect. There are roughly 160,000 people in Copacabana. If you explore the neighborhoods, there are 12 to 13 story high residences which dominate the borough. Começo de carreira. Traveling through Rio de Janeiro, take notice of all the street art, which is celebrated and encouraged. A foreign and unique style is what I see. Watch out for the high climbers striking their presence. The city is becoming a canvas for some of Brazil's top street artists, which you will have to see to believe. The art shouts inspiration.
The next adventure starts just south of the Tiwaka Forest on our way to Cristo Rodenta, located on top of the Corcovado Mountain. To get there, I must skate through Lagoa, where I will eventually begin my hike up. Lagoa is around the Rodrigo de Fretes Lagoon, which is a treasure to view. Considered the third most expensive neighborhood to reside in South America, tall buildings with beautiful balconies encompass the neighborhood. En route, I approach the Tiawaka Forest. Beautiful greenery is everywhere. This forest is hard to take in at once. I am confronted by various wild urban forest monkeys along the way for the first time ever. One of the world's most biodiverse countries, Brazil has a total of four million plant and animal species there are more species of monkey than any other nation here. Along the hike, I meet up with fellow hikers Leonardo, Fabricio, and Danielle. It was perfect timing because the rugged part of the hike has started. Step after step, we climb the mountain at a steady pace. We pass tribal statues and engravings. It's hard to believe that according to a 2007 report, there are at least 70 uncontacted tribes in the Brazilian Amazon. We approach a set of railroad tracks and decide to cut through along with the train path. Corcovado Rack Railway was opened in 1884 and refurbished in 1980. This was an excellent idea because we got to take advantage of a hidden view. A view of the ocean, the Maracana Stadium which hosted various FIFA events and more sightseeing treasures. A tour train passes by. We set off once again, and before you know it, we have reached Cristo Rodenta. What a sight to see. There was a lot of people here witnessing for the first time one of the seven wonders of the world. The new Seven Wonders of the World was a campaign started in 2000 to choose wonders of the world from a selection of 200 existing monuments. At 98 feet tall, no wonder Cristo Redentor is one of the seven wonders of the world. Considered an icon of not only Rio de Janeiro, but all of Brazil, Christ the Redeemer is the fifth largest statue of Jesus in the entire world. Open arms on the statue symbolize peace. Local engineer, Heather da Silva Costa designed the statue. Cristo Rodento was struck by lightning twice, once during a violent thunderstorm on February 10, 2008. The second time was on January 17, 2014, which dislodged a finger on the right hand. I depart from the group and decide to take the back roads down the north side of the Corcovado Mountain, which was a dangerous skate down, but I kept a mild pace. I eventually make it down and have to take a taxi back to Laboa. Mission accomplished. I've now witnessed one of the seven wonders of the world and managed to hike through the Tiawaka Forest, which was honestly 
one of the highlights. The next day, I took a quick trip back to the base of the Corcovado Mountain to check out Festival de Vida Sustentaville, located at the Park Lag Visual Art School building. An awesome event loaded with music, breads, spreads, craft beers, an art show, and fun for the kids. The ground floor of the Corcovado Mountain offered carved out tunnels, towers, and other marvels. photo shoots of all kinds. The last day I spent in Rio was intended to be very relaxing. I took a quick walk down to Impanima Beach which is a reported surf beach infested with gorgeous cactus. I walked up on the stone arpador and then it hit me. I set out and had an experience of a lifetime never to be forgotten. Stay tuned for part two and thanks for watching.